one. We will go over one of the most important data structures in Python, lists. Two. Lists are ordered and start at index of zero. If you type this line at the end prompt, you can create an empty list. Three. You can use the type function to find what kind of Python object a particular variable represents. Fussel, which was created previously, is found to be indeed a list. 4. For lists, one of the most useful functions is to know their length. We can find the length of a list using the len function. We find that it is indeed zero, as our list is empty. 5. Here we define a list of three different elements. 6. We can extract individual elements of the list using the index number, inside square brackets. In Python, this holds even for other data structures. 7. The individual elements within list may be any Python object. Here we have an integer, floating point number, and a string. 8. To add an element to an array, the common way is using the append function. We can also use the plus operator to join lists. 9. It is possible to create nested lists, that is lists within lists. 10. To extract an element from a nested list, you will have to have two indices and two separate bracket pairs. 11. Negative indices can be used as well. For example, minus 1 refers to the last element, and minus 2 is the second to last element. 12. The common way to check if a value is present in list is to use the in command. It will return either true or false. 13. If we want to iterate over a list, we can use the for loop. Here the block that is executed for each element is just one line long, mainly a print statement. 14. Slicing refers to extracting a list from another list. For slicing we have to give two numbers, the first number gives the starting element of the new list, and the second number gives the boundary, the first value, that is not in the new list. If either of the two numbers is not listed, zero is assumed for first number, or list length, for second number. 15. We can also use negative values in slicing. This is useful if we do not know what is the size of the list. 16. The multiply symbol, applied to a list, refers to repeating a list. 17. Two of the important list functions are count and index. Count returns how many elements are of a particular value, while index returns the first index found for the given value. 18. If count is used with a value not in list, it returns zero, while index will return an error. Errors are also known as exceptions. 19. Strings are very similar to lists of characters. 20. However, individual string characters cannot be changed. This is called the immutable property in Python. 21. If we want to really create a list from a string value, we have to use the list function. Now individual members can be changed as a list is mutable. Finally, we can use the string function, join, to create a string from a list of characters. For the join function, we have to start with quotes, so it knows we want to create a string. 22. You may go to pythonaudio.blogspot.com to see the slides. To see a larger image of the slide, you can click on them at that page, which provides easy navigation controls. The text for the audio of the slides as well, as any relevant source code is also on that page.